If you do go on to enjoy today's video, please consider hitting the like button. It really does help the video out, even if I don't deserve it because I'm terrible at video games. And if you want to follow me on Twitter for absolutely no reason, the link for that is down below. Now, if you do need any coins, head over to u7buystore.com. Use the code TVM at checkout for a discount. The link is in the description. What is going on, guys? TVM here. Welcome back to the Brentford Save. I didn't expect to be here. I didn't record the game because I thought Leeds-Liverpool was a foregone conclusion. But as you can see, Leeds beat Liverpool. What a game that is, by the way. Uh, Leeds beat Liverpool two goals to one. We dispatched Aston Villa five goals to one. It was a very straightforward training session. We, I believe, mathematically, have just won the league. I'm pretty sure we, we have. We've got a lot of emails. Five-star Brentford triumph. That was the game. I didn't read that. Uh, going up, going up. Vlahovic got himself a hat-trick in that last game. He played very well. He missed a penalty as well, but he still scored um, some nice goals. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Brentford celebrate best ever Premier League finish. Brentford's fine season has seen them now guarantee their best ever Premier League finishing position with the four matches still to play. This is a superb season from Brentford who exceeded expectations throughout the campaign and have claimed a deserved title. So there we are. Apparently we've done the double. We... What? What did we win? UEFA Super Cup. Okay, well we still got the FA Cup to, to play, of course, the final. Uh, on on the road to winning the league title, we dispatched Sheffield United fairly recently 11-0. We beat Arsenal 8-0. We beat Man United, which was a live game, 6-0. We also beat Man City 5-1, which I also think was a live game at the very start of the season. And there we are. Uh, slightly disappointing to go out of the Champions League in the quarterfinal this year, but it is what it is. We have toppled Liverpool for consecutive titles. Uh, so they won it in 21-22, 22-23, 23-24, 24-25. We finished runners-up that season. We finished third the season before. We have progressively improved. And, and I think it's one of the most gradual saves I think I've ever had. So I was working it out earlier, and the first season... We obviously finished in the uh, Europa Conference spot. Second season, we won the Europa Conference League. Third season, lost in the Europa League final, which was disappointing. And then in the third season, or the fourth season, we won the Champions League. Fifth season, we've just won the league. It has been such a gradual improvement. And we've been doing so, so well. I'm actually really happy with the way that this save has gone. Uh, apparently, I've promised Livakovic that we would win the league. I've kept that promise. Delict, Milinkovic, Savic, all three of those, apparently, I promised we would win the league. Can't remember that. Pr probably don't do that if, um, if you have ambitions of keeping your players. Challenge for the Premier League title, one year ahead of schedule. Now, in my personal opinion, I am about three years ahead of schedule in terms of winning the league. I didn't expect to be winning it until around 2029, 2030. But we have won it in 2026, which I'm very pleased about. Board delighted. I win the Premier League, apparently for them, two years ahead of schedule. Now, for me personally, like I said, it was three. And even then, I think we needed things to go our way. We have been really lucky this year. Um, and I'll go through the league table in just a second. But um, pre-season odds, we were only four. If you're doing decimal, 4.0 to win the league, which is actually not that great of odds. I think Liverpool were like 1.25 or something stupid. Look how many times Liverpool have won the league in the last six years. That is mental. Um, right, so if we go look at the league table... Obviously, we've still got games to go, but we have been crowned champions, so we can look at it from that perspective. We've been lucky this year, because if you look at last season, Liverpool only lost three games. They lost to us 1-0, Brighton 2-1, and Man United 2-1. And they only drew four, scored 103 goals, 24 goals conceded, and they had a goal difference of 79. They finished on 97 points. We finished on 91 points, and we still came second. But if you look at this year, Liverpool have had a worse season. Now, granted, we beat them. Uh, did we get a point against them as well? Yeah, we, we got a point against them. I think 
season last season we lost. Uh, either way, they have had a slightly worse season. But even even so, I think we still probably would have won the league. But there's been no third competitor. Obviously, last season Man City finished on 87 points, but this season it was just a two horse race right from the beginning. So I thought it would be a good time to come back just briefly for this because I believe we're going to get to see us lift the title for those who are interested. But um, 10 minutes left of the Leeds game. We are at home. Barisic about to step up for a penalty and he scores. I'm rendering at the same time, so this is probably a bad idea. I'm going to have to switch into 2D. I'm going to have to try and remember <clears throat> to switch back into uh 3d before the presentation but so just for the final 10 minutes we'll just sit with it i mean we've absolutely destroyed leeds uh, as you can see liverpool beat chelsea 5-0 so they've come off the back of their two undefeated to leeds and gone and smashed chelsea so just an off day for liverpool but um we have been rampant dominant such a confident performance we've been knocking it around very very well um unbelievable actually i've changed a couple of the instructions on a few of the players as well well i say a few i think just the center backs they're both now ball playing instead of c um center, just standard center back sesco in and just puts it wide i'll let it run a little bit just a couple more seconds right let's go in to sideline uh because if we do if we stay in 2d it won't show the the presentation in 3d so here we go we are about to lift the premier league title it's not as exciting as it could have been because liverpool didn't keep pace with us and we 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 won a few games that honestly wasn't expecting to to win so it's a little bit less i don't know exciting just because i kind of knew it was coming but it is still very exciting times why livakovic is lifting the Premier League title as the captain. I don't know because he is not the captain. But then again, the captain is injured and that's Declan Rice. So maybe he is the vice captain. I'm not sure. Uh, either way, there we are. I have a purple tracksuit as always. I'm really not sure why. I think that might just be the default and I didn't change it. But either way, Premier League title winners. Can we cap off the season with an FA Cup? And that leads us, ladies and gentlemen, to the FA Cup final. We are not without some injuries, though. Unfortunately, things are not perfect. Um, Fernino, out injured, obviously, for the remainder of the season, because this is the final game. Jude Bellingham is injured. Um, he will remain. Uh, he will resume training in seven days. Not good enough. Yavi Gallen isn't fit enough to play. Uh, ben Godfrey is injured and Caligiri, who is on loan, who I think I would probably look to bring in full time if he was willing, uh, if we were to stay in this save. Uh, but he's injured, so he can't play in his final loan game. When it comes to the rest of the team, uh, Sesko is fit, but only just. And Livakovic is fit, but only just, as well as Declan Rice. He's back fit again, but they're not fully like Livakovic is losing match sharpness because he has been injured very very recently the rest of them are well, apart from Talis Magna who's been on the sidelines with a few knocks here or there the rest of them are, are, are doing well but I don't know if they're going to be able to hold out for the full 90 we might have to rotate I've gone with a slightly different system as well so um no covering no there will be a cover so Nianzu is going to be the cover ball playing defender, but Delict is now a ball playing defender, not a centre back. Uh, that is one change. Declan Rice is going to be on defensive duty as the deep line playmaker. Milinkovic Savic is not a box to box anymore. I've put him as an attacking central midfield player. The reason I do this is for yet another attacking option in the penalty area. And he's managed to grab himself. On the decline because he's 31 maybe. I'm not sure. But either way, he's managed to grab himself 10 goals this season. Which is a considerable amount considering he plays purely central midfield. And he has six assists to his name as well. More goals than he's scored in any of the previous seasons in in game time, if you will. So back to 21, 20, is it 21, 22 we start? So yeah, more goals than he's had in previous years. And one assist off his record last year with Lazio as well so he has that capability good finishing good first touch decent dribbling etc so he can bomb forward if we start to get a little bit overrun in midfield which we're likely to I may switch to put him back to a box-to-box -box, or 
I might move Kimmich into an inverted wing back so that he covers the space when Milinkovic Savic goes forward and we still are focusing play down the left because Barisic is probably the best player in the world. Absolutely incredible return for a left back. I mean, Andy Robertson, eat your heart out. Now, Chelsea, they bottled, I'm not going to say bottled, they lost the uh, Champions League semi-final against PSG. They got absolutely trounced. Four goals to nil. They got absolutely nowhere near them. They have a few problems. So they have two suspensions. Uh, Ronald Arujo, I'm not sure if he's first team or not. Oh, well, I would imagine he is. Uh, 17 tackling, 17 marking. That's a very big player to be missing. So he's injured. Uh, we'll go back to that. Uh, Aaron Wambasaka, we know who he is. He plays right back. Is suspended. Uh, sorry, Arujo is suspended. Uh, Wambasaka suspended. Then they have Ryan Gravenberch out with a twisted ankle, and they have uh, Federico Chiesa out with a groin strain. So they have what I would assume to be four first team players out through suspension and injury. We have two, possibly three. Through, suspend, uh, through injury, no suspensions. So not our first team, definitely not their first team. Is that going to be enough to give us the edge in this game? I hope so. It's going to be a long episode, this one. I appreciate that, but I'm, I'm thinking it's probably going to be the last episode in the Brentford save. If we win it, it's going to be amazing. If we don't win it, it's a shame, but I think it's time to move on to something new, and I have an idea. I've taken some comments on board, and I've looked at a few other things going on in the world of Football Manager, and I've come up with my own little twist on something, so that's what we're going to do, and I'm hopefully going to start that tomorrow. Anyway, they have Lukaku up front, very dangerous in, the ga in this game. Kai Havertz is in there, who scored two against us in the last game that we played in the Champions League to knock us out. Nicholas Seawald, if you remember two or three seasons ago, we signed him as a youth player from, I think it was, was it Leipzig? Uh, and now, of course, he plays for Chelsea. Rudiger's there. Uh, Zabani is in there. Now, I would imagine he's in there to replace the centre-back, I can't remember the name of. And Reese James comes in, which is not a bad little replacement to have for Aaron Wan-Bissaka. So yeah, it's still a very strong, Timo Werner on the bench, still a very strong Chelsea team. Are we going to be good enough? And is playing Milinkovic Savic as an attacking central midfield player a good idea? Look at that. They're, in, they're level. They, were, they weren't crossing over. If you know, you know. If you don't know, then where have you been? So here we go then. FA Cup final. This is the trophy I want to win. And I'm actually a little bit more nervous than I was in a Champions League final, which I don't know why. It's stupid. But back in the 90s, and further back, of course. This was a huge trophy. It's not really considered that big a deal anymore. Same with the, the League Cup. But they were big trophies back in my day. So that's why I want to win it. The FA Cup means a lot to me. I've said it before. Declan Rice playing only his second game since the injury that kept him out for about two months. Barisic with a long ball forward to Sesko. Vlahovic nicks it off Rudiger's mistake. And, oh, what a save from Mendy. I thought he was going to go across goal. He didn't. Let's just encourage a little bit, get some smiley faces going on. This is a big occasion, Wembley. We don't often see ourselves here. Do we want Rafinha to mark Rhys James? I don't think so. Um, we'll just let Rhys James do whatever he's doing. Uh, I've said that. There he goes. Wait for it. There. <laughs> Why didn't I tell Rafinha to mark Rhys James? don't know. Um, ball down this right-hand side then. Can he put a good ball in? That's questionable. Mount over. Talis Magno intercepts the ball to Pulisic. Havertz has it. Mount into Seawold, Lukaku. Rhys James has got an awful lot of space, and it's a save from Livakovic. Right. Um, I'm not one to normally change things this early on, but I want to force my opponents inside, not outside. And I'll tell you for why, because Rhys James seems to be a little bit dangerous on that outside, and they're looking for it. He's making those runs, he's finding the space. If we push them inside... I'm hoping that Delict and Nianzu, especially Nianzu on cover, should be good enough to stop any advance. This Talis Magno with the interception. Sergei Milinkovic, Savic, Sesko, Vlahovic. Vlahovic back again to Rafinha. Oh, why do they not go across goal? What is going on? Why? Why? That's two opportunities now. They've gone for the near post. If they'd gone across goal, it might have been a different story. Barisic with the corner. Sesko can't quite head it near goal. And again, I'm just... I'm just thinking, 
uh, set piece corner. Who is there? Uh, it is. Yeah, it's Delict at the near post. Delict has the best jumping and heading of the entire team. Nianzu's quite close, but Delict is a little bit more established. So that's why he's attacking the near post. But it was Sesko a second ago. Corner comes in. Sesko's there again. Vlahovic has just missed an open goal. Oh, my God. I haven't got the tie on. I've just realised that. No, wow, we're going to lose. We are going to lose. I forgot it was an FA Cup fight. I, I, I just don't have it. I don't know where it is. No idea. Damn. Um... Barisic steals it. Milinkovic Savage. Rice back to Barisic. Patiently brings it forward. Stops, turns around. Bit bit of patience. Okay, back to the keeper. If we keep the ball, I don't mind so much. It's if they nick it, we've got a problem. And we've lost the ball. Seawold Havertz. James. I don't like this. I do not like it at all. If we can nick the ball off them here and score before half time I'd be very pleased if they go up the other end now and score a goal from there just passing it around the back there's Lahovic goal that is something that happens not often but it does happen it happened actually a few games ago what well, was it was it West Ham it might have been West Ham and they were just dithering with it at the back and then they just passed it straight to me and it wasn't Vlahovic on that occasion I think it was Fernino they passed it straight to and he just popped it in but um that is a terrible mistake at the back for Chelsea in a cup final and we go in at the break leading 1-0 it hasn't been the most entertaining of first halves but I'll take it I don't care if it's the most boring second half you've ever seen I don't care if we see a highlight to be honest I will take a 1-0 win they knocked us out of the Champions League so this is revenge now I'm, I know you'd probably rather progress in the Champions League than you would win the FA Cup however they didn't win the Champions League, so they progressed, but to to what end? Ball played over. Rafinha has it. He plays a long ball over to Sesko. It's, I mean, it was ambitious, to say the least, but uh, their goalkeeper has just smashed it clear. Kimmich in space. Has time. He has Talis Magno. Sergei milinkovic Savic. Sesko. I'm tempted to bring um, Zaniolo on in a second. It depends what happens here, to be honest. That is brilliant football. Magno, goal. Well, 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 I mean that. It's not even going to be looked at, but it didn't look like it had crossed the line from where I was. Uh, let's bring on Zaniolo for Rafinha. Switch those two around. I was actually going to take off Magno, but, Zan uh, but Rafinha looks a little bit tired. Magno looks fine, and he's just scored. It'd be a little bit weird to say, hey, you've just scored. Come off. Get off. You're useless. We're going to have a look at that again. Uh, whether they're going to show us goal line technology, I'm not sure. But um, I'm not counting my chickens just yet. It was a great bit of football. Oh, yeah, it's definitely over the line. That is 100% a goal. Are we going to get to see a replay of it in slow motion? Uh, no. Don't need to, to be honest. But, I mean, that wasn't as over the line as Lampard's was. And that wasn't given. Uh, we didn't have VAR then, of course. But still, 20 minutes left. What do we do? Don't want to rock the boat too much. We're in the lead. We're in control. We're doing enough. But... Does Declan Rice need to come off? No, he doesn't. No one needs to come off. We're not saving players for games. We don't care about suspensions. We are playing and running the players into the ground because this is the final foray. Ball forward to Vlahovic. Can he nod it down? No. Seawald steals it. Plays it forward to Timo Werner, who's off the bench. Livakovic plucks it out of the air. Not a problem. I really wish I'd wore my tie. Uh, Ten minutes left then. Now do I make a sub just for the sake of making a sub? It's not even a question of do I need to? Should I just do it anyway? I'm tempted to bring on maybe Jordan Shakiri for Talis Magno. I do like a bit of that. And to, apart from Curtis Jones, I don't really have a spare striker. So Sesko and Vlahovic have to stay on. There's no two ways about it. Do we take off Milinkovic Savic or Declan Rice? I have options. Curtis Jones and Yuri Ferreira are very capable of playing both roles. I think what I'll do is I'll take Declan Rice off and I'll move his um, his role down to central midfield support. Yeah, that's what we're... Yeah, yeah well, why not? Uh, yeah, that's what I'll do. I am Denard, but I will do it. Uh, can we play? Thanks. Uh, let's praise the boys. Actually, let's not do it yet because if we concede here, that's going to be problematic. Oh, it's looped it. He's hit the corner. And Yuri Freire is going to get that clear. Let's praise the boys. They're happy about it. Let's not take any chances whatsoever. We'll still work the ball down the left. And we'll lower the tempo down to standard. We'll just see the game out, is it? I mean, it was a rather uneventful second half. And 
there we are. We are FA Cup winners. That is a pretty damn good way to end the series, if you ask me. Now, in in FM normally, if, if this was me, like not playing on camera, would I stay at Brentford? Quite possibly, to be honest. Um, I, I've, I've built a, a pretty decent team. We have a fair few youth players coming through now that I've bought them because we don't have a very good youth recruitment. So there is a fair, there is, I mean, there's an argument to be to be made for, for staying and, and just playing more. But in terms of content, I've achieved what I wanted to. We've won the league, we've won the FA Cup, we've won the Champions League, not all in the same year, but still, and we've won some other trophies as well. I've done enough. I feel like I'm happy enough that I can leave it there and we can move on and start afresh. The temptation was to stay in this universe and to move to a different club. Like, I've not looked at the other jobs available because I've kind of decided what I wanted to do. Oh, an achievement. Do the double. There we go. Uh, oh, I'm, uh, Cup Glory. Uh, I wonder if there was a do the treble um, achievement. Let's go to... Uh, let's go to Job Center first. So, the Juve job is available. Uh, Hoffenheim, Frankfurt, and an international manager's job at Slovenia. Now, if I was to take any of them, it might be Juventus, who didn't finish Champions League football this year. Uh, where did they? Milan won the league. Let's go back. Juve third, Juve second, Juve fourth, Juve second. And that's where you started. So Juventus have not won the Serie A since the start of the of the save, which is interesting because it could, I mean, that's a decent little challenge. Go back and, and build them. They've not even got Champions League football this year. So we could go in there and improve them and try and win the Italian League. Maybe even give a good account of ourselves in the Europa League and then next season try and win the Champions League or give a good account of ourselves there again. That That's, that's a thing, sure. But um, I think that's definitely going to be something that I look at doing in my next save. Because my next save, I want to start from the very very bottom now before we talk about that because we're going to have to talk about it um oh we i mean technically speaking we did do a treble of sorts it wasn't a, a standard treble of league champions league fa cup which i believe is the classic treble you could argue that the league cup fa cup and the league is a treble as well but um yeah the classic treble for me is the champions league the league and the fa cup but we do have one of sorts uh, we've received 1.8 million i have apparently led brentford to glory it's amazing to me that the board have been like, well, your performance is at 70% of what we would expect it to be in the FA Cup. We've just won the whole thing. We didn't lose. How can it only be 70%? I don't get it. Um, fitness concern. No one's really that bothered because everyone gets like months off now. Then again, there could be a European competition right now. I'm not sure. Uh, FA Cup bonuses, blah, blah, blah. Right. So let's go have a look at the league. It finished. It finished. It finished. With us on 103 points, having scored 129 goals, which is apparently a new record for the division. The previous record was held by Aston Villa, which was set back in the 30s. I don't know what the Premier League record is, but the, the first division, the top flight, was set at 128 or 126, one or the other, back in the 30s by Aston Villa. So we've broken that, which is outrageous. And... Um, and yeah, we've got the second best defence in the league. It's a shame we couldn't finish top of that, but it is what it is. Now, in terms of team, or let's look at player overall. Um, so, top goal scorer is Erling Haaland, Haaland with 31 goals in 20, no, 36 games. Fernino got 26 goals in 26 games, but of course he did get 10 against Sheffield United, so take it with a pinch of salt. Sesco did rather well, considering he picked up an injury, and he is only 22. But the... Um, the, the biggest thing for me is Borna Barisic. He's just unbelievable. His, cro his cross completion is actually 43%, which is good, but it's not as good as Mohamed Kamara, who plays for Leeds, which is crazy. Is it? Would it be Kamara if it's a C and Kamara if it's a K? Who knows? Um, shots per minute. Sesco's top of that. You can't see it because my face is in the way. Games won. Delict was involved in more victories than any other player. Rafinha, Borna Barisic was up, were up there. Fernino got more goals per 90 minutes than any other player. Uh, Adi Amy, former us, of course, now Liverpool, up there with uh, with 1.04. Um, and yeah, there, there's a few of the a few of the stats for you. 
So most key passes, Borna Barisic, 260. Most assists, Barisic, 27. Man of the match, Barisic, 14. And yeah, I don't think we finished top of anything else, which is fine. Obviously, we didn't need to. Team detailed stats. We had a little look at this the other day. It's not really changed an awful lot. I think we looked at this the other day. Uh, but it has, or maybe even in this episode, but it hasn't changed an awful lot since the last game. So, I mean, the team that we're going to leave here in this save is one of, I mean, it is solid. It, it Obviously, it has to be because we've just won the league. We've won the FA Cup. We've done really well. The midfield is good. If I could have my time again, would I buy Declan Rice? No. Uh, to be honest, I would have spent that $100 million on Bellingham a little bit earlier. I think I might have gone after Milinkovic Savic a little bit earlier because he was absolutely fantastic. Declan Rice is not a bad player by any stretch of the imagination. He's not in there to score goals and get assists. He's in there to just be a brick wall in the midfield. And he does it well, but he just doesn't really... I don't know, he's not... This version of him anyway, for me, wasn't good enough. For the money that we spent, I feel like we could have got a better player. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. In terms of other signings, Rafinha has always been one of those dodgy ones where I, was, I, I bought him because I thought, wow, Rafinha, what a player. Brought him in and, you know, 19 assists this year. That doesn't get spoken about enough because Borna Barisic has outshone him, right? Uh, cost us 118 million collectively because we ended up having to pay over time and when he hit certain things winning the league etc in fact it could still go up to 121 million and it probably will do eventually for something but um, I think it's international appearances but that I mean played more games this season than he has done in any other season only the seven goals but 19 assists three man of the matches good return would I get him again I'm not entirely sure he's done really well for us I am happy that he's here but I don't know could that money have been better spent elsewhere mm, don't know i'm on the fence with that one I, i'm leaning more towards i'm happy that he's here and that i bought him rice no wouldn't have done it Kimmich wouldn't have bought him either he did uh, a lot better toward the back end he got a few more assists got seven assists in all competitions in 39 games which you know for a left back or right back sorry you might be thinking well that's not too bad or maybe you're playing him at a position because he's more of a central midfield player he did play there a fair few times and he wasn't a bad player at all but i just feel like i've i've spent a little bit more than i should have done there 97 million was it was a bit too much um player of the save obviously is barisic second i think is livakovic it has to be said he is phenomenal nianzu was a very good purchase he played a lot of football for us Obviously, we got him in on loan from Bayern Munich, and he did he did play a lot. He didn't score as many goals as I thought he would do from corners and such. De Ligt was a good purchase. Very happy about that. Probably should have bought him a lot sooner. Seven goals from corners, two assists in there, nodding them down from corners. Yeah, should have bought him sooner, if I'm honest. Should have maybe looked to get him in the 22-23 season, somewhere around here. I think that would have been a a better purchase than than some of the plays that we managed to pick up. Um, but yeah, I think those those two definitely are the best signings. Fernino, I've not seen him in anyone else's save be as good as this. Not that I've watched that much in terms of FM, but he has been phenomenal. And playing him when he maybe wasn't quite good enough when we loaned him in from Villarreal, and he developed into the play that he did, and we bought him for 31, and he's just been phenomenal ever since. Very, very happy. But all in all, can't knock it. We know about Sesko, we know about Vahovic, they're in nearly everyone's saves. But going in to the very next uh, FM save, if you will, if you're interested, I will be starting from the very bottom. And that is no badges whatsoever. Uh, we're going to start, I'm not going to go unemployed because it'll take ages to get a job, but I am going to start off at a club. And I'm going to pick the most local club to me where I am living, where this house is right now. I'm going to pick the most local club. I know exactly what club it is because it is in the game and it is literally five minutes down the road. And I used to play for them, but I will start there and it's going to be a road to glory. It's going to be a journey. We're not going to take that club and make it the best in, in the business. We're going to take that club, go as far as we can. When a better job and a, and a suitable job comes available, going to apply for it, going to try and get it, going to take that club as far as we can. And then we're going to move and we're going to dance around until... We hit our, not forever club, but a club that we can achieve a lot with. 
Talk more about it when we start the save. Hopefully that'll be tomorrow. If you have enjoyed the Brentford save and you're a little bit sad that it's finishing or you're happy that it's finishing, do me a favor and hit the like button. Thank you very much for your support on it, of course. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And until the next time, goodbye.